A few years ago, as the presenter of the BBC Two series Maestro, I had the pleasure to meet and to interview the Olympic skating champion John Curry. The year was 1987, the year he was told he was HIV positive. He died last month at the age of 44. Curry's influence on skating was enormous, his artistic style inspiring not only the British Olympic champions who followed him, Robin Cousins and Jane Torval and Christopher Dean, as they were happy to acknowledge, but skaters around the world. As a tribute to that artistry, the BBC now offers a repeat of that maestro programme. The story of a man who stood on top of the skating world, Olympic champion and world champion. A sensitive man who conquered his own self-doubts and those of his critics to achieve his aim. had been set in the European Championships in Geneva. Curry went into his free skating program lying second. to do more than one thinks is possible from oneself. 
In childhood, he had his own model theatre. Gulliver's Travels was a particular favourite. In recent years, he's accepted stage roles in productions as diverse as Brigadoon and A Midsummer Night's Dream. Skating was no different. It also needed artistic fulfilment. I was really lucky because when I was um, growing up in probably my most impressionable age, I saw Fontaine. And um, that was the best you could see uh, regarding musicality and, and commitment to movement and uh, the way it was, it was just a real inspiration. And uh, having seen that, um, I chose to accept those standards that the Royal Ballet had as being my own. I used to have an invisible um, jury of Royal Ballet to watch me. And I would think, well, if this would be acceptable in that situation, then it was okay. Your first instruction as a skater was uh, as an ice dancer. Presumably that wasn't your decision. No, well, I was very lucky with my first teacher, who was Ken Vickers, um, because he did care a great deal about the way one skated. And uh, from the very, very first time I went on the ice, which I remember quite clearly, he told me to keep my back straight and to hold my head up and uh, that I should bend my knees without sticking my bottom out. What sort of age were you when you started? I was seven and I went to the ice rink once a week and I was allowed to have a 15 minute lesson and then I practiced what I had learned for 15 minutes and then I was dragged away. <laughs> How did this all come about? Well, my father was an invalid and my brother also and my mother was very um, busy, you know, naturally taking care of them and the house and it just wasn't that easy to, to find half a, uh, a day a week to take a, a child ice skating. There were mo other things which were much more important to do. But being a good mother, she did, and um, she also saw that I had proper boots and skates that fitted me from the word go. Um, I had seen ice skating on the television. I saw a, an ice pantomime from Wembley, and I was very, very captivated by it. Um, the music, the music. I, I love music. I've always loved theatre of all kinds. Um, I loved the, um, it was like dancing, and yet it had a freedom and a special magic which I had never seen in dancing. Um, prior to that, I had asked if I could take ballet lessons. I had been told, no, I couldn't. Um, and then when I asked to take some good to go ice skating, I was told I could, uh, because ice skating um, is protected by the umbrella of sport, you see, so it was quite acceptable. Who said no? My father. I remember being taken into the sitting room and uh, my mother saying, uh, can I take John to ballet lessons? And my father getting quite cross and saying, no, absolutely could not. And uh, that was the end of that. And it was never brought up again. Um, Does that mean your mother was supportive? She would have certainly allowed me to do it, yes. Yeah, the 